Now in this problem example, what you are shown is a bolt, a bolt which has broken. And the bolt which has, you know, is, of course it has broken because it exceeded some allowable stress, maybe normal shear, I don't know. But here what it says that for the, you know, failure point, at the point where failure happened, maybe you have been able to measure what is the state of stress. So this is the state of stress as the failure point over here. Now, the failure need not have happened because of these stresses, there can, would have been uh, rotated at the at the same point where the failure happened maybe at a particular plane this failed right so what this problem asks you in that the first part so there are two parts to this the first part asks you that represents the state of stress in terms of the principal stresses and you show the diagram for that the second part asks you about the maximum in plane shear and the associated average normal stress so let's uh, you know solve each of these problems separately so let's go ahead and tackle the first one over here now from the this state of stress that is given already let us write that for our original element what is my sigma x sigma y and tau x y over here so let's go ahead and take a look now as you can see from here itself sigma x is negative you know sigma y is positive and your tau x y is also positive so let's make a note of these ones of the inputs which are given So for the first part of the problem, which is this one over here, for the calculating the principal stresses, so we also have to calculate the values of the stresses and the angles at which it is acting. So let's go ahead and write out the expression for the principal stresses. So we have seen this expression to calculate the principal stresses as the sigma 1 comma 2 one of them will be the maximum the other one will be the minimum because the summation has to add up to the original sigma x plus sigma y now if you see this expression it often helps out that separately you calculate this one and this one over here so that you are not always having to punch the numbers so from the things which are given let's calculate sigma x plus sigma y by 2 and sigma x minus sigma y by 2 this is just for convenience So after calculating you know these parameters if you plug this over here tau xy is already given so if you plug these guys over here what you essentially get is so you get the values of the maximum and the minimum stresses 116.4 is the maximum and the minimum is minus 46.4 please make a note that when you add these two over here you get a value of you know 70 mpa which is similar to 90 minus 20 70 so the the, the that 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 uh, that relationship is preserved that your sum of the stresses must be equal to the original sum of the normal stresses that you have over here now the interesting the interesting thing now is that now that we have find the values or the magnitudes is to find the angle at which it acts so for that for calculating the angle we know this for this particular relationship that is there So here also if you plug in the values of tau x y and sigma x minus sigma y 2 what you are eventually going to get is so from this expression you can get two different roots for your theta p right separated by 90 degrees so the first root which you are going to get and the second root you are going which you are going to get I am going to write it down. So now the question, the big question here is that we have found that you know these are the maximum and the minimum stresses and these are the two angles that we have separated by 90 degrees. Now the question is that which stress corresponds to which angle? How do we find that out? Does this 116 correspond to this one or it corresponds to this one or this one 46 point? 4 corresponds to this or to this one over here what is the easiest way to find out always remember that we come to these expressions over here from the very basic steps the very basic steps meaning that your very basic relationship 
about any particular rotation theta what is the sigma x prime we know that sigma x prime is sigma x plus sigma y by 2 you know plus sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 uh, the, uh, cosine of 2 theta plus tau x y sine of 2 theta so if you so go back and substitute into those relationship this particular angle in that one let's see what is the value of sigma x prime it must be one of these two so let's see this minus 23.73 if we go and plug it back what number will come be come up with over there so if i go back and you know plug that number over there plug and write the expression and plug that number over there i will just write it below here let's see what we get so let's write the basic equation first we always know that one So this is the basic relationship now in this basic relationship if i put back sigma x plus sigma y by 2 sigma x minus sigma y by 2 and for theta let's say i put this one over here so if here i go and put theta as if you plug in these values what you will get that this one comes out as equals to minus 46.4 mpa which it has to it has to come out as one of these values which you got over here but now the good thing is that you know which angle corresponds to which which stress so we know that minus 23.73 corresponds to this minus 46.4 and obviously the other stress 116.4 must correspond to this one over here so now that we know that which stress corresponds to which angle and how much these elements rotate over here we can uh, we can draw the diagram the problem asks you to draw the draw the diagram over here so we can draw the diagram for this rotated element that is there so you see minus 23.73 so that means a clockwise rotation and about that rotation you will have that sigma x prime that is minus 46.4 over here so let let me go ahead and draw the element and mark the stresses So about this 20 negative 23.73 that is a clockwise rotation my the stress i got was minus 46.4 so it's a compressive force so once i know this the other ones are automatically fixed over there also remember one important thing that since this is the principal directions you calculate sigma 1 and sigma 2 there will be no tau so the tau will not be there so this element is only going to have normal stresses across all the four phases so let's go ahead and mark that So this is the final state of stress that you have 46.4 46.4 compressive over here and this is the 116.4 and if you if you calculate this if you if you want to write this angle over here with respect to the horizontal remember that this is 90 degree minus 23.73 which is essentially this one over here 66.27. So with that we are done with the first part of the problem let's go ahead and do the second part of the problem now where we are going to rotate about an element which is going to be you know 45 degree uh, sorry not 45 which is where the um, uh, where the intent shear is maximum why i said 45 degree remember that the plane of maximum intent shear is 45 degrees away from your uh, plane of the uh, principal axis so ideally i think what you should get if you solve and find it out it is going to be minus 23.73 plus 45 so it will be a you know slightly positive uh, anti-clockwise rotation so let's go ahead and take a look and let's see if what we hypothesize we get the same thing or not so for the maximum in plane shear so this is the second part of the problem that we're looking at which is this part over here i have retained what i had previously these were the given parameters and this i have also you know calculated in the previous uh, example or the previous part of the problem so for the maximum in plane shear let's go ahead and write it we know that the expression for finding that angle come boils down to So 
So if you go back and plug in the numbers over here, sigma x minus sigma y by 2 tau x y, then you find this, this theta. So this will be theta s over here. Again, you will get two roots. I will write down the roots directly. These roots are also separated by uh, 90 degrees over here. Now the question is that 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 okay, I know the roots now, but what is the value? What is the value of this maximum in plane shear? Remember, you always have the basic expressions for the tau x prime y prime. You plug in the value of 21.3, and that will give you the value of your maximum shear. So let's go ahead and write that. So this is the general expression so here again if i plug this one and maybe the smaller angle over here 21.3 degrees so you get a positive 81.4 mp so that that means that when you are giving a small anti-clockwise rotation of 21.3 degrees you are going to have the maximum in plane shear of positive 81.4 now note one thing here had you plugged in 111.3 you would have gotten minus 81.4 that's a whole set of different convention which we are not going to bother about remember for shear if you just draw one of the sides the all the other sides get automatically you know fixed so typically when you get a negative sign that means a positive that that means a clockwise rotation we're not going to get into that so for the shear you always calculate what is the smaller angle that you get you draw the rotated element mark the shear and all the other shears get automatically fixed for that now also remember that for the uh, in plane shear we, we know that when we have the maximum in plane shear in in those planes our our normal stresses do not vanish the value of the normal stresses becomes equals to the average stress that is sigma x plus sigma y by 2 so let's write that down as well So let's mark the important points that we got and now draw our rotated element so we are going to deal with this first angle always deal with the smaller angle that you have and also you see this 21.3 that you got if you compare uh, to the previous example so that is you know minus 20 3.73 uh, plus 45 if you do it you are going to get the angle that we got 21 point something so this is also checks out that it is 45 degrees removed from your uh, plane of the maximum uh, from the from the principal plane. so let me draw the rotated element and mark the stresses and we can you can see So on this face, which is a clockwise 21.3, I am getting this positive shear of 81.4. Now remember what is the positive here? This is my positive x prime direction. This is the positive, you know, somewhere here is your positive y prime you know, direction over here. Right. So a positive shear means originating on the positive face and pointing towards the positive y prime. Now this magnitude is 81.4 now remember that once you mark one of the shears the other ones are automatically fixed so these are the all the shears that you get see this this angle that you see over here the one which y makes i will just again come back to that other angle which we calculated this particular angle is 90 plus 21.3 so this is 111.3 degrees which is this one over here so had you plugged in this one this would have you would have gotten a minus 81.4 that doesn't mean the shear is negative that convention tells you that your the value that you are calculating it's in a acts in a clockwise sense this one acts in an anti-clockwise sense this is another whole set of different convention for the shear the positive shear means anti-clockwise negative shear means clockwise you are not going to go into that you always calculate the smaller angle that will give you the rotation as well as the value and the direction of the shear 
so now the, this has marked the shear but remember for the plane of the maximum in plane shear we also have the average normal stresses which are acting so let's go ahead and mark that a positive 35 across all the four cases So I hope this problem example was also clear in the first part we calculated the principal stresses then the second part we calculated the maximum in plane shear and those two planes are you know removed by each other by 45 degrees. So this concludes the you know subtopic on calculating the maximum in plane normal stresses and the maximum in plane shear.